going to do a quick demonstration on the uh, Ultimate MX Hauler. I think this is one of the original versions that came out back at the beginning. They made a few changes here and there, but uh, in general they all work uh, the same way. The reason I say I think it's different is because mine does not have a clip in the receiver for the uh, receiver pin to thread into. Mine actually has a welded nut on the inside and at some point they switched to putting in clips which is neither good nor bad, it's just uh, a manufacturing decision that they made. So uh, I have I believe a 10 inch drop adapter that I bought because depending on the wheels I have on my bike and the vehicle that I want to put it on it's a good system but you have to be fairly close with the heights. So uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And one of the really cool things that they could probably make a ton of money on all on its own is the uh, pins that they use on the receiver. So it's a conventional pin that's threaded and when you've got this in the receiver does not move at all. So that's uh, like a genius idea all on its own. So I'll go get a few more of the parts that come along with this. The uh, tight adapter is separate, which while I was moving it, this is the, uh, the newer style clip that they use. So when I got this, instead of having like grade 8 nuts, it had wing nuts that you could tighten with this that went on the bottom of these shafts and these go into the pegs. I wasn't comfortable with that. Whoever had it before me, I bought this used. Tried to drill it for cotter pins. And in the end, I don't think either of the owners, including myself, were comfortable using that. So I just double nut some grade 8 nuts on here flip around to the operation side of it. So you slip it into the uh, receiver, you tighten the nut there. Transport it like that. The first couple pumps are the hardest on the whole thing. There's a lot of weight trying to get it over center. But if you can do that without blowing out the seals, which I haven't done yet, you'll be all right. You can buy replacement jacks at Princess Auto or in the US Harbor Freight. And they're like 20 bucks or something. So they're easily replaced when you get to the top. This uh, locks the pivot point. Just wanna see if you can see that. I think it's in the video. Then you'll tighten this up with that. So right now I've got my uh, DRZSM configured as like a road bike. It's got the uh, street tires on it. So we'll put this down and try to do a, a complete video in one shot. Although I can't because I don't have any wrenches out, but you'll understand the main part of it. So I don't have any wrenches to do the, the double nutting here. So that's down. Set up the camera where I think it needs to be. This is a three quarter ton Dodge van. Everybody should have one if they can't afford a Mercedes Sprinter. This is the next best thing. set for height. So right now the skid plate is like the perfect height for this combination of a vehicle Ultimate MX hauler. When I've got my off-road wheels it's easier to lift 
but when I've got this on the back of my Jeep, it has a two inch lift. I can't use it just standard way with the SM tires. It works with the uh, off-road tires really well. So that's why I bought the 10 inch drop, but what I didn't take into consideration was how much droop my Jeep suspension had. So it drooped too much when I have the 10 inch drop on there. So I use a transmission jack to get the bike on to the Jeep depending on what I need to do. Or if you had a bunch of heavy friends, you could just get them to sit in the back of the Jeep. And that would lower the suspension as well. So just slide this up on there. Now read the safety instructions before you do this. I may have things out of turn a little bit. I don't want to be held responsible, so make sure you do your reading. You can't get it through like this into the hole here, but you can get this piece into here. Just got to move the bike over a little bit. So at this point you would put the uh, nuts and washers on the bottom. Forgive the cat litter on the ground, the last tenants here did that. So you can see I put it through the peg here as well. Who would have thought that this clumping cat litter would turn into some kind of slimy clay? Then I used two straps on the handlebars. Try to zoom this out a little bit. Always try to find the ones that have the hooks that fit your handlebars, otherwise you'll need to use straps to go around them. And then I like ones that store the uh, remaining tape somehow. side doesn't have any receiver per se. So let's clip it on the bottom. The other side does have a hook, so let's bring it over here. So 
So, kind of see how uh, it goes on just onto the bar, and then down there's a, a loop that it hooks onto. At this point, you kind of start to tighten the uh, straps up a little bit, straighten out the wheel. You do the uh, double nutting on the pegs, and I believe that would be it. But again, always look at the manual. Then I'll do a quick drive around the block, check things are tight. And then after that, I'll go for wherever I'm going. After about a half an hour, I stop and I check things out, make sure it's all tight. Nothing is loosened on me yet, but I have a flat frame and a flat skid plate on mine. And I kind of position it so that the uh, lever for the mono shock is behind the uh, plate. Otherwise, it wouldn't sit flat, but luckily for me, it sits flat. I think on some bikes, they offer some kind of a wedge you shove under there. The whole thing's in position. I've driven with this quite a bit on the Jeep. And with it's a Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee with a diesel. It's a 3-liter WK, I'm trying to think, 2008.5. And I'll admit that this is a bit heavy for that vehicle. It lifts the front up. And it actually, it's a bit much for the front CVs. It's probably not good for them. And it becomes a little bit harder to steer. When I have the bike on the back of the van, it's so heavy and it's meant for towing a lot that it doesn't seem to matter quite as much. So take that in mind that you may have a different handling of your vehicle and the steering may not be as responsive. So take a good look at it. If your front end is all jacked up, then you know you don't have much uh, weight on your front wheels anymore. So be careful, but in general, I think this is a good system. It's very handy and more convenient depending where you live. Rather than having a trailer, you can just have this thing. You stick it on the back of the vehicle. So uh, thank you for watching. All right, I guess no video is complete without an Encore. So I'll just show you uh, how tight the uh, bike is on everything. So it'll jiggle around while you're riding or driving, but that's okay. See if we can see a side profile of the van or not. It's a pretty heavy van, three quarter ton. So the suspension uh, behaves quite well. It lifts up the front a little bit. But uh, anyway, it just peaks out a little bit, a few inches on either side of the vehicle. Same is true with the Jeep. It's not a bad thing, so you don't forget that it's there. Can't get the uh, stand set up very well here but anyway between the sides and you'll see it in the rear view that uh, your bike is there hasn't fallen off yet I'll let you know if it did so I've got uh, over a thousand kilometers carrying the bike on here if not uh, a thousand miles and uh, never an issue